What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today is a very, very good day because one of the games I've been looking forward to for years has finally come out in early access. This game is called The Last Spell. It's a wonderfully animated game that's about holding the undead off your city for long enough to cast a spell that will banish magic from the earth and make everything mundane like it is for our world. There is no magic, but it will give you a reprieve and kill all of the undead effectively. Uh, you get a motley cast of randomized characters at the beginning of the game, and you've got to defend the city using turn-based RPG tactics for, I think, 10 or 15 nights or something like that. Uh, it has metagame progression, and so every single time you win or lose, you unlock boons from the gods to try it again and defend. Uh, aside from that, you never quite know what you're going to get, and I think that's actually sort of what's appealing about it, is that you don't get to pick your heroes in this. They're just three random people from the city that have random varied skill sets, and you've got to make it work. This leads to runs that are absolutely kind of hopeless sometimes, and it leads to other runs where you'll get a lot of early game momentum, and you just, whoa, you, you know, you'll be taking them out. It's got a fantastic soundtrack, as you just heard, like a real banger of a soundtrack. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today, take a look at the game for 25, 30 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below. You can also check out my Twitter, my Twitch stream, my Discord, and all the other associated locations where you can holler at me. But let's play the game, because we're on a limited time scale right now. Uh, we get to pick where we want to defend first. This game is in early access, so keep in mind things are going to change as it develops. Uh, I had the pleasure of playing the prologue back when they had a Steam Festival like a year ago, and this build is markedly different from the build that they put out for the Steam Prologue. Uh, so anyways, there's a lot of things that are different, but I still vaguely know how to play the game. I've been practicing for the last few days on the prologue just to get used to the mechanics and the flow of combat. And so I think we should be okay for at least the first couple nights. I may end up throwing near the end so that you guys can see the progression elements. Uh, basically, you have to leverage your fate with the gods of darkness and the gods, gods of light in between runs uh, to get boons and bonuses and things of that nature. I don't know if that's going to become circumstantial later on, whereas like if you favor the dark gods more than the gods of light, if something interesting is going to happen, but I do think that that would be a really, really cool hook that the developers could implement, is that if you sell out entirely to like the gods of hell and the gods of darkness in order to protect your city, uh, weird quirks start happening, or if you sell out completely to the gods of light, uh, they'll kind of limit you in what you're allowed to do in order to protect the city. Uh, I think that would be a really cool mechanic, and I'm waiting to see if that's actually going to become a thing. So here we are in the city. We've got three characters. Let's take a look at them and see if they're any good. Usually you end up with a wizard, a warrior, and an archer, has been my experience. Uh, so our wizard. Our wizard has the Sword of Damocles. It's got transfer, which allows him, I think, to give other people his stats and move points uh, from behind the lines. He's got magic missiles, which is an AoE. He's got brace, which is going to restore some of his armor. That's the little white bar right there. The white bar has got to go before the red bar starts to go. Uh, it looks like he's also got punch, but everybody has punch, so there's nothing special about that. This is our city. Uh, a couple key things you need to be aware of with the city. Uh, these are the outer walls. I unlocked these in my last playthrough. Uh, so we started with some remnant walls around the city, which is really, really nice. Uh, those will help out if the zombies start to get through. Uh, top left, we're in the deployment phase right now. During the deployment phase, we can put our units wherever we want to put them and get ready for the coming night. Uh, we've also got our money. We've got our materials. Money is for buying goods and also for services and building buildings. Materials are for building defenses. And then we've got tainted essence. Whenever we kill monsters, we get tainted essence. And then we can use that for various things. Or if it carries over and we die, uh, the tainted essence can be gifted to the dark gods in order to gain kind of buffs and permanent unlocks that make your later on runs more easy. Uh, we've also got the amount of workers we have available inside of our city. Workers can tear down buildings in order to give you materials. Uh, uh, workers can also be assigned to buildings in order to give you healing or to give you MP or to give you like more movement points, stuff like that. It just kind of depends. Our three characters, though, we already took a look at Lamas. We've got Vivian. Uh, Vivian is a maneuverability character. Uh, so Vivian is going to be all about looking for openings. I, I find that the warriors in this game are not that good until they are. A and that's because their entire gimmick is that they need enemy positioning to be perfect in order to function. And if you can get the enemy positioning in just that sweet spot, they'll wipe out like half the map in one turn. But if they're out of position or if they're in a wrong spot, 
uh, not good. They're pretty much just going to walk around like one ta one attacking everything. Uh, we've got our archer over here who's got quick shot. Actually, we didn't look at the warrior, I guess. So the warrior's got slice. The warrior's got dash. Uh, dash is basically an ability where the spot behind the enemy needs to be open. But if the spot behind the enemy is open, it does way, way, way more damage than the default attack. We've got Blade Rush, which is the same thing, but to greater effect. It's an AoE that hits three things in front of you, but the fourth slot behind the three has to be open. Otherwise, that ability is unusable. Uh, we have Evasion. That's going to raise this character's dodge, which is pretty good. Uh, and then Punch, of course, which is the standard fare. With our Archer, we've got Normal Quick Shot. Doesn't hit that hard. Doesn't really get a whole lot done, but it'll have to do. Uh, we also have Slow Death. This is going to put 40 poison damage on the enemy for three turns and lower their movement points. We've got weak spot. Uh, weak spot is armor piercing. And so anyways, for enemies that have armor, that's a good one to go after, but it does cost us mana. These little pips at the top are our APs and our manas, which you can see in the bottom left. However, she's got an amazing mana pool. My last character is nobody, and my last character's had, like, a mana pool that was that good. Uh, we've also got Blaze. Uh, I think Blaze is going to be a multi-hit AoE, as I recall. I think I've used this in the prologue. And then we've also got Brace, which is going to buff up her armor if you think she's going to take a hit on the next turn. The zombies are coming, and there's not a whole lot that we can do for right now, so let's just let them come. So there they are, moving out of the blackness. It looks like they're kind of favoring a leftward direction. So we're going to keep that in mind. I'm going to move... I'm going to move the archer down to here. And we'll kind of just open up on these zombies right here on this flank and see if we can get them taken care of. There we go. So those zombies are down. Uh, and then just put two on that guy. I mean, there's not really a whole lot else to do. And then keep kind of cycling left. All right. So over here we have Magic Missile. Obviously, we want to go with Magic Missile for right now because we need to soften up some of these targets. There we go. So we softened up the targets. It did cost us a little bit of MP, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, instead, we're just going to kind of like knock out who we can here and reposition because unfortunately we are way out of position for right now. Uh, they went hard left and I kind of went centralized. And so unfortunately, we've got to spend this turn sort of getting to where we want to be. I'm going to put dodge on her twice just in case they decide to go after her. Uh, I think they can close that distance right there. Yes, indeed they can. So chances are she's going to end up tanking a little bit on this turn. Uh, yes, I know I still have action points remaining. I just I can't do anything with them. So the enemy's attacks and how they work. The enemy will only attack if they end adjacent to a character, basically. So they are going to single-mindedly move towards the city to try to attack it and... If they stop next to a character, they will happenstance attack, but they actually aren't physically, like, targeting your characters. They're moving this way, and if you happen to be adjacent to them, they'll use their attack on you instead of something else. Uh, something to keep in mind. So there's a kill right there. I need you to be back over here. We're going to go for a big dash right there. That's all three of them dead. Um, I don't know if I want to dig in this tight. I need to be able to get away. So really what you want to do at the beginning of wave is you kind of want to whittle the front line and then run away. Uh, because you don't, so you regenerate a little bit of health every single day, but not a lot. So you see how we have like 120 HP? We only regenerate like 12 HP a night. And so healing costs you workers, and you really don't want to use your workers on that. Because using workers on that means that they're not gathering materials so you can build more defenses. And it can become kind of a hairy, tricky situation. Uh, so anyways, my conflict for here right now is like, do I want to move this character forward, or do I want to move this character back? Um, that's all of his AP, her AP. We'll move Vivian back behind this barricade. We do need to do something over here. Yeah, I don't know exactly what I want to do over here. I don't want to use up all of my mage's mana, like on the first engagement but oh big dodge right there too that's unfortunate okay well throw damage on whoever you can I mean thinning out the wave is fine uh, we'll move them over to here and just kind of wait it out and see what happens our archers ready to go so let's put a couple of shots on these guys right here I did want to check out so that's like a blast let's see what that does oh it chains okay Good to know. So she can soften people up like that right there and then finish them off. Okay. 
Uh, let's fall back a little bit. I'm going to keep people, like, reasonably close to each other. But they are closing with the city right now, which is not great. Uh, so anytime they attack anything in the city, so not the walls, not the defenses, but like a building, uh, this is your panic meter. So this panic meter is going to go up. You don't want this panic meter to go up. At the end of the level, or at the end of the night, you're going to get bonuses depending on how high the panic level is. And it goes from right to left. It goes tick, 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 and it stops where the red ends. Uh, and so anyways, you get more or less materials and gold depending on how well you did during the night. Uh, so it can be worth it for you to kind of hold your ground and, and wipe out who you can, where you can. I would like for you to be right here. That's going to put you woefully out of position, which is unfortunate. But I think the people back here should be able to hold the line, I hope. And I think it's possibly worth it at this point to actually sacrifice a big chunk of a character's HP if it means that we have a really good night and we defend from city panic. Uh, you die. Oh, he's out of range. Feels bad. Okay, uh, let's go over here and you die, please. Thank you. I don't want you anywhere near my walls. You're awful and smelly and undead and nobody loves you. You gotta go for the heavy hits, man. If you can't defeat them with physical damage, you gotta hit them with emotional damage. Uh, let's go. I'm gonna try to free up the archer, actually. Ooh, another dodge. Don't like that. Okay, mage, fall back. Archer. So you've got a lot of movement. I think it's a really good idea if we firebomb these guys. Oh, I hit the wrong button. There we go. We'll firebomb, and then we'll firebomb. Yeah, that killed off a couple. Wasn't perfect, but... Eh, we'll see what happens. This person is definitely getting hit on this turn. Oh, but not hit by that much. That's not that terrible. It didn't go as badly. I didn't realize there was an obstacle right there. So that definitely could have been worse. I think if I take you to there, we kill right there. We kill right there. And we still have some AP left. Fall back behind the barricade. Finish off that guy. Basically, I want you to soften everybody up so that the mage can have a good turn. Yeah, that's fine. That works. Uh, you guys fall back and plug the hole right here. And then mage, I need you to do cleanup duty with a magic missile. Oh, the dodges are getting me in so much trouble right now. Oh, the dodges are just unbelievable at the moment. Okay, I'm going to put you right back behind this wall so that you've got some variability on what you can do. You get behind that wall right there, and we'll just let them kind of flow up. So that's the rest of the wave right there. Uh, the enemy has gotten inside the city, though, so we're going to have to deal with that. I think we've got an opportunity. Ooh. Okay. Not too terrible, but not what I was going for. We need line of sight over here. Move you up. And... Magic missiles to thin it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, we're looking good on this side. However, we are getting low on mana, which is why our character is now chirping and letting us know that, like, hey, I need more mana. Uh, let's go ahead and you just hold the line right here. I don't think there's any other task that I can really put you towards. Like, I just, I need you to hold, really. Um, I think... Fall back and defend this house right here. Because I think some of these are going to attack this wall, and some of these are going to go for the, the building right here. And so I want you to be in the way so that they attack you instead of the building. I just don't want my city panic to go up. But I think our positioning as it stands right now is acceptable. Actually, none of them went after my character. Okay, I can live with that. Uh, you finish that guy off, like, right this second. He's got to go. Uh, come over here. Go.
good, 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 good. We need line of sight for that. Somebody's gonna have to go outside the wall. I don't see any way around it. All right, we'll start dropping magical bombs on kids. Yeah, I'd prefer to soften all them up so that when the archer comes up, we can get a multi-kill right there. This game is definitely strategic, trust me. Like, it's, it's one of those games where you kinda wanna set up combos and you kinda wanna think about where everybody's going and what everybody's doing on any given turn. Okay, so we're pretty much tapped out on AP, but we did really, really good on this wave. Uh, the first wave very rarely goes this well for me, and honestly, I think the walls are to blame. Uh, having access to these walls due to that perk that I unlocked in between this run and my last run, pretty major. And this should be the end of it, so that you guys can see the city building management portion of the game. Perfect. We survived the first night. We got 800 souls. We only took a little bit of damage, which is not bad. Uh, Vivian took the worst of it. So we'll see what we can do with Vivian very, very shortly. We got S rank right here, and you'll see why that matters. There you go. You definitely want to get S rank. The difference between having 100 materials available and having like 80 materials available or 50 materials available is very, very stark because you can build a section of barricade for seven materials, which means that you're getting like an extra three to four tiles worth of barricades that you can build if you do really, really well versus doing really poorly. Uh, so we'll get our money. We also got a free weapon right there, which is great. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of like soul points right here that have already been fed into the portal. Night one, that was easy. And so if you do things, like these little mini achievements, basically, so you get these amounts right here for killing zombies, and then over here, you actually, for good and for bad, for like losing 30 HP, we get 15 souls. You know, for triggering momentum five times, we get 50 souls. For using 15 mana, we get 50, you know. And, and so I do like that, that like whether for good or for ill, all the things you do during the battle, whether they work out or not, whether things go good, whether things go bad, you get bonuses for like everything. And I think that's a really positive way to reinforce the fact that this is a really, really difficult game. Like, it's a hard game. Do not feel bad if you struggle. The game does have an easier setting you can put it on if you're having a really bad time with the normal difficulty. And so I appreciate the accessibility of the developers taking the time to do that in early access. But at the same time, you know, don't get frustrated with this one. It's a tough game. A real tough game. Okay. So let's carry it on forward. It looks like our next attack is coming from the right. We've got a lot less barricades over there. I'm going to go ahead and just, like, sort of passively position these guys over here, just in case I forget, so I don't have to move them across the entire city in the off chance that I make a mistake. Uh, we have production complete over here. So we got our knight reward. What was it? Oh, cool. We can pick an armor. Nice. So that'll give us 36 health. It'll give us 52 armor. And we've got to decide who we want it to go on to. Actually, the person we want it on is Vivienne. Uh, 36 health. We lose a move point, which is kind of a bummer. That right there gives more XP, and that one right there. Did I mention this game has randomized Diablo loot? That's going to be, a, like, I feel like this game really, really, really has the constituent parts to be, like, a big player in indie gaming. Like, I honestly think this game's going to be a big, big hit. It's got a lot of cool things. Uh, that one gives seven critical. Yeah, I'll take that. And then we'll put it on Vivienne. Did it change her armor? I honestly, I didn't look at what she looked like prior to the battle, and so I don't know if that changed anything for her. It does. She's now wearing leather armor. Look at that. One of my pet peeves has been resolved. I hate it when characters don't change when you put gear and armor on them. Everyone is leveled, so we need to do our progression. Uh, you're going to get an option every time you level up for a main stat and an off stat. Uh, for her, the no-brainer is dodge, uh, so we'll go ahead and take that. There we go. So she's got a little bit more dodge. And then what is her total dodge right now? Oh, she's got a dodge malice. She's got minus 5% from a trait. Oh, it's from her being a squire. Gotcha. So she's not actually a fully trained warrior. Okay. Fair enough. And then we got to pick between accuracy and daily health regen. Since I'm going to be using her to tank, normally I'll go with accuracy because it makes us more likely to not waste our turn missing swings. But the daily health regen for a tank I think is going to be fairly vital uh, so that I can save workers and, and basically not spend a whole bunch of resources healing her up all the time after I use her to tank. We also get to pick a perk. Uh, we can go with Fatality, which allows us to execute anything lower than 10 HP around us. Avid Learner. That'll even out her XP malice that she has. Uh, coagulation right here. It'll give her... 
Let's see, armor is increased by 75% of your regen. That does actually have really, really good... Uh, that has really, really good synergy with what we just took because her regen is actually pretty solid. 75% of 24 is going to be around, you know, 18 or so in there somewhere. And so having 18 more armor is, I think, or 18 more regen is really, really good because that puts her up to a 42. That means we can really put her in rough situations and count on the fact that she's going to bounce back. So I'm going to go with that. Catherine. Uh, Catherine is our archer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give the archer... Let's go with dodge on the archer, I guess. There's nothing else here that really looks appealing to me. We've got a chance to stun, but I don't think she has any abilities with a stun effect. Yeah. You can see there's little tabs at the bottom of the ability that'll tell you precisely what they do and like what their core parts are. So this one is propagation and multi-hit. Uh, these will modify those. So for example, if it has an opportunistic trait, this will modify it and make it better. If it has the momentum trait, it'll make it better. Uh, we also have poison over there. But the poison is not multi-target, so I don't feel really inclined to use a lot of the poison attacks. Like, if it hit two or three people at a time, I'd like the poison attack a lot more, but it's only got one target. So, it's got one target and it deals no damage. So you have to rely on poison to take the enemy out. And I wasn't paying attention, so I'm not sure if the poison is applied at the beginning or the end of the enemy turn. Which I think is an important thing to realize, too. I will probably... Let's re-roll it real fast. I do like the daily mana regen, even though it's not highlighted as a main attribute, because I do like spamming this little explosive ability that propagates, so... Hopefully it'll work out. I think she's already got a bonus to getting XP. No, she doesn't. Oh, she's got bad crit. Okay, so we don't want to build her in a crit direction. That would be a mistake. We can increase her poison damage. She's got a chance of regenerating a move point for every enemy that she damages during a singular attack. I think that might work out because she's got that chain fire spell. That might actually come in handy. Like, it can't be relied upon because 5% is a really, really low, like, dividend return. But, like... It might work out uh, for our mage. I'm going to go purely with dodge. And then for our second one, daily mana regen, I think is going to be really important for the mage. Because uh, we've only got three casts of magic missile on this one, so might get a little bit ugly. Uh, I'm going to have the mage get bonus XP so he levels up faster. And then I think that's what we've got going for us right now. I think we're, we're solid on our level ups. Now, we need to prep for the next night. Uh, what we can do is I would suggest we start building some defenses. That would be something that I think is a really good idea. Uh, I'm going to leave a hole right there. I'm going to leave a hole right there. And like a little hole right there. Yeah, this seems like it might work out. This is looking okay. Uh, so that's all good right there. Basically, the archers and the mage, they can fire from behind this. The warrior, the holes are for him, because the warrior's got to go out and actually lie, or for her, because she's got to go out and actually fight the enemy. And so that's why I left the holes right there. It doesn't matter. If they find anything they can attack, they'll stop. And so they're not going to slip through these holes. I don't think, anyways. Uh, we could buy new gear. Gear is not crazy expensive, but the upgrades are worth it a lot of the time. Uh, it can be worth pulling down, like, a new Warhammer, or it can be worth pulling down, like, a new bow or something like that. Your abilities are tied to your weapons, uh, so keep that in mind as well. I'll probably take that and sell it just for the extra four gold, because I don't think anybody's going to take, like, a newbie armor. Uh, looks like we can get a Sword Blast scroll. It's a consumable. Okay. What I'm interested in is the short bow for our archer. I'm not a big fan of the crossbow. I like the shortbow skill sets a lot better. Let's uh, let's take a look and see what we can do here before we do that, though. So let's apply our workers. We can build some structures, which I think is important. I want to get rid of these because these are inside the city limits and they're in a bad spot. And this is honestly going to be one of the only areas where we can build a building. Let's go with a structure over here. We can only build three things for right now. The temple, the mana well, and the shop. We already have a shop, so it won't let us build that. 
The mana well allows us to take a worker and put him inside of there for the night, and it'll give us some mana back. Uh, we've also got the temple over here, which does the same thing, but with health. Uh, it's up to you which you want to run. I'll probably do the one for health today, and I'll do the one for... I'll probably do the one for health today, and I'll do the one for mana tomorrow. Uh, let's go ahead and heal up our warrior real fast. Warrior's good. As you can see, that used up one of our pop cap on our workers. And now we can assign them to buildings. And so I'm going to have them... Yeah, tear down this building. And tear down this building. There we go. Uh, these are just ruined buildings. You don't have to worry about tearing them down. This is where you're supposed to get your resources from, is basically telling people to go do stuff. In buying new gear, I would like to get the wooden short bow. So we'll grab that. Uh, we will put that on you. She's going to lose some block from having this equipped, but it'll be okay. Uh, the other thing that we can do is everybody has a primary and a secondary weapon set. So if you don't have anything particular interesting you can do with your current weapon set, you can swap to your off weapon set. And so we'll keep that on her as just kind of like a contingency plan. From here, we'll put the archer right here. Let's put the warrior right there. We'll put the archer right here. And we'll put the wizard kind of over here, just in case they decide to lump up in one direction. There we go. And then we end the phase, and it's pretty much time for us to run it again and try to survive another night. Uh, these are only going to hold for, like, one turn. So keep that in mind. But it should give us... Ooh, I kind of put that a little far out. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, let's go ahead, and I want you to move to here. Still out of range, huh? All right, we'll help out right there. Keep moving back. Kind of dithered down on them a little bit. Uh, yeah, get back in a way. You attack there, attack there, attack there. Just kind of clean them out a little bit. Fall back. You still have an AP left. Go ahead and buff your armor. And then Archer. Ooh, they're actually going wide right there. Uh, we do have Rain of Arrows, which might be slightly helpful. Not really. We also have Tight Volley. It looks like we can't attack out into the fog, though. So that may not be our best play. I'll do a strong shot right there just to drop him. And you keep it up right there. Yep, here they come. Good lordy lordy lord. We have problems. Warrior up front. And then fall back. Wizard, I'm gonna need some magic missiles out of you. Good. Basically, I'm gonna try to pick off the stragglers and the ones that are going through the wall uh, using our abilities. I'm gonna need the archer to fall back over to here in just a minute just to handle this little guy because he's gonna outrun and go around and it's gonna tank our city panic. Uh, sometimes we actually did too good of a job blocking off this avenue. Eh, too good of a job. I know, who would have ever expected that you would see too good of a job here at the Nerd Castle? No AP left, but we can use the water to our advantage right here, I think. Anybody else have anything left you can do? Uh, you kind of pull back behind the wall, just in case one of these guys gets the idea to run on us. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. That's why I moved him back. Uh, they're, I, I think they're definitely coming to the city walls, by the way. I think they're going to get into the city, no problem. Uh, so if you mouse over this, it'll tell you where your city panic is at. Uh, it'll flag all the little guys that are causing city, city panic right now uh, that will be like finalized at the end of the turn, basically. Uh, you come back over to here... Give me a few of them down. You've still got range left. Get rid of that little outrider right there. Oh, couldn't kill him. Unfortunate. Okay. I don't love our position right here. 
we are in some ways in a little bit of trouble. Basically, we're getting overrun. But there's just so many of them. You know what I mean? You're out of AP. Okay, fall back. Uh, you get him, obviously. He's got to go. And then, what do I want to do with you? You kind of rotate over to here. Give me a magic missile right there. Magic Missile did okay. It's not going to save us, but it did all right. The fog is actually a lot closer over here than I thought it would be. What I should have done is I should have patched in a little bit closer, but the game's like brand new, you know what I mean? I was practicing in the prologue, but it's a little bit different in the prologue, and so I, I overplayed my hand by putting all those barricades too far out. I should have spent more money creating a wall further in, I think. That's what I should have done, but we're out of time for the day. So here, let me show you the progression elements uh, inside the options here. Very, very simple. You can take a look at all the stuff that's available. You've got your standard resolution options. You've got your volume mixers. Uh, you've got languages that are available for right now. It looks like it's just English. Uh, you can change it to QWERTY, AZERTY, or QUARTZ if you want to. And then, of course, you can constrain the mouse to the screen, which is one of the most important things for any game to have, in my opinion. If we abandon this run, you'll see our progression. So we have the gods of darkness and we have the gods of light. The gods of darkness will allow us to take those tainted souls that we acquired and it'll give us some flavor text, you know. There you go. It'll give us some it'll give us some flavor text basically to sink it on in and then we can spend these points on other stuff. So we can unlock the armor maker, we can get uh, an extra AP on all of our characters if we had a thousand. That would be just absolutely, positively fantastic. As you can see, there's a lot of favors. There's 80 of them. So you're going to be working on this a lot in order to get things squared away. Uh, the God of Light functions like achievements. So the God of Light doesn't have a currency. The God of Light wants you to do stuff and then gives you powerful bonuses for it. Uh, so, for example, survive night one at under level one of City Panic five times. And so you will get spears, longbows, power staves uh, from here. You gather 500 materials uh, through all your playthroughs. You will get uh, a scavenger camp that unlocks, that gives you materials passively, so on and so forth. And so, like, the, the gods of darkness are basically rewarding you for, like, losing and just killing as many zombies as you can on the way out. And then the gods of light are, like, achievements. They have goals that they want you to go for and that you're working towards as you're playing the game. So, anyways, this is the last spell. I will be streaming this game, so I definitely recommend swinging through my Twitch stream at some point if you wanted to see more. Uh, other than that, I'll see y'all next time. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worth while in the world of indie games every single day, so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, it was the last spell. Tomorrow it will likely be something different. See y'all next time. Bye.